Good morning, everyone. This is John with Gun.Deals. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a very unique upper receiver. This is the Unique AR's Slim Hex Upper. And as you can tell, the handguard is a little bit eccentric. Now, full disclosure on the Unique AR Upper is that they did reach out to me and they wanted to send me some products to review. And I did tell them that their upper builds looked a little bit silly, but I would be happy to check one out. So here we are. And while you're here, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe, as that is all free and does help us out quite a bit. And on top of that, go ahead and comment your favorite AR aesthetic in the comments down below, whether that be cloner stuff, gamer stuff, or just your basic black rifle. Now, if you're not familiar with Unique ARs, as I was not until very recently, their bread and butter is going to be their extensive line of custom handguards. Now, they do offer turnkey solutions, as well as complete custom options as well, which you can design with them for a custom look to your AR. On top of that, they also offer a Cerakote job, and you can get really wacky with your color combos and what the handguard actually is. Now, with there being a lot of custom work and smaller quantities of these components, you can go ahead and take that value proposition and just throw it out the window. These aren't going to be a dollar-for-dollar dollar value-priced upper, they are going to be, one, unique, of course, given their name, but they can also flex into another role, that being a bit of a race gun, as they are actually quite well gassed and very, very flat shooting. Prices start at about $1,200 and can go up as high as you want it to. Now, before we get into the full parts list, I do want to mention that the example that I have is actually a older version, so there are a couple parts changes on the newer ones that you will get if you buy one now, and they actually upgraded several components, so the upper that they're selling now is actually better than the one that I currently have, and when we come to those differences, I will, of course, point them out. Starting out out front, we have a Rook muzzle brake. Now, the Rook muzzle brake is incredibly effective. You have three ports on each side, and six small ports up top. It eliminates approximately 90% of recoil and about 105% of muzzle rise, as there is a little bit of downward force when you pull the trigger, as it is a little bit overdriven with those six top ports. Overall, it is incredibly pleasant to shoot in terms of recoil. However, it takes all of those recoil savings and puts them straight into concussion to your face. Now, the first difference that we're gonna get into in terms of the parts on my upper versus an upper that is currently offered, my upper comes with a older, cheaper barrel, 16 inch 556 government profile, one in seven twist. It's 4150 chrome molly vanadium steel, black nitride. It's a very decent barrel. It's basically perfectly gas and it's also very accurate as well. However, the new barrels that come with them are actually very nice. Odin works. They have a bit of a middleweight profile. They're a one in eight twist versus a one in seven. And I believe they're also stainless steel versus the black nitride here. So as far as gassing, as far as accuracy, as far as profile, these are all guaranteed one MOA with match ammunition. And again, the Odin works barrel is about $200 more expensive than the barrel that they currently have in this upper. And again, that is basically a free upgrade for you at that $1,200-ish dollar price category. Now, getting into the handguard, which is, again, unique ARs of bread and butter. This is one of their factory lines with Picatinny and M-Lock. And then they have a slightly different line that is much more circular and can be even crazier in terms of the design. Now, this might shock you, but this slim hex rail is actually surprisingly good. On the three and six o'clock sides of the handguard, they have completely omitted M-Lock in favor of this hex pattern. Now the hex pattern itself does offer a ton of ventilation and actually some extra grip as well. It's been very comfortable in my hands, whether I'm using gloves or not. And on top we have full Picatinny and on the bottom we have full M-Lock. So you can still mount bipods, you can still mount iron sights or something else on the top rail, but you're extremely limited in terms of options because again, you have no M-Lock on the three and six o'clock which means that you have a difficult time mounting lights and lasers if you did want to do that. Now, while they do call it the slim hex rail, and it definitely does feel good in the hands, you can very easily wrap around it. It's not a very thick handguard. The actual material itself is actually pretty thick, so it's actually not the lightest or flimsiest rail on the market and quite a bit sturdier than I would have imagined. Now, something else that also surprised me about the rail is actually the lockup as well on the handguard and the barrel nut. So starting out with the barrel nut, I believe it is a steel barrel nut, and it is vented all the way around the sides, therefore increasing its surface area and hopefully cooling down a little bit faster, keeping that heat away from the chamber. But on top of that, the lockup is surprisingly robust. So the barrel nut does need to be timed with the gas tube, and when it is timed with the gas tube, 
you actually have four bolts on the rail itself that lock into the channels on the barrel nut, which is actually extremely robust in terms of anti-rotation because you have steel on steel contact at four separate places on the handguard. Now the actual lockup to secure the handguard to the barrel nut is just a simple clamp system. Now I should mention that all the bolts on the handguard, the two clamp bolts and the four bolts that lock it into the barrel nut, all came Loctited from the factory, which is a very nice touch. Now you have steel on steel on the clamp because there is actually a steel ring press fit into the other side, so it's not steel into aluminum, it is steel into steel. And when you combine that with the four bolts on the back of the handguard that lock into the barrel nut, therefore eliminating virtually all potential shift in the rail. So despite being a gamer-y look or a little bit more aggressive or artistic, you actually have a very, very solid lockup between the handguard and the barrel nut. It is still limited in terms of options because of course they do emit M-lock on the sides, but it is nice that you do have a relatively strong rail and on top of that, the lockup is nearly perfect. Now moving back to the upper receiver, this is a billet upper receiver, which is again kind of adding to the aesthetics. It is a little bit bulkier. It is a little bit more aggressive in terms of its cuts and angles. It does look nice. It's not necessarily needed, but again, this build is going for more of an aesthetic look. I believe these are made for them by Juggernaut Tactical, but I could be wrong about that. Now, another difference between this upper receiver and one that you would get if you bought one right now is that the BCG in this is considerably cheaper. It's a 9310 bolt, black nitride, 8620 carrier, all very, very basic. But again, for that $1,200 price tag, we would like to see something a little nicer. And again, I believe the new ones are from Odinworks, which they do offer a considerably nicer BCG. Now, one very, very disappointing component on this build is going to be the charging handle. It's just a really basic mil spec charging handle and for 1200 bucks and with a bit of a gamer vibe to it i would like to see something ambidextrous it doesn't necessarily have to be huge or crazy even a more minute or subdued ambi charging handle would be greatly appreciated for this type of upper receiver and again for that 1200 hundred dollar price tag now getting into how the thing actually performed how it shot was it accurate so on and so forth we're going to go ahead and start with the reliability now I only have a few hundred rounds on this so far, and I did have two issues. Now I had that issue with PMC XTAC 62 grain, which is basically an M855 clone. I did have two failures to fire with that ammo, and one of them was quite difficult to extract, so I'm not sure what was going on there. I did retest the two rounds that failed to fire in another upper receiver. It was a 16 inch PSA Sabre with the FN uh, chrome lined barrel, so a very, very good barrel. One of them went off the second time, and the other one did not. So 50-50 in terms of that, one of them was probably ammunition related and one was probably just your straight up failure to fire. Now with modern ARs, especially really nice ARs, we would like to see zero malfunctions for at least the first thousand rounds. But keep in mind, I can't hold it against the new upper receivers as they come with updated and improved parts, but I can hold it against this one for not being uber reliable, at least with that specific type of ammunition, which is admittedly not the best. Now getting into accuracy that I got out of this barrel, which is again kind of a moot point at this point in time because again the new barrels are updated and much higher quality, but still the 1MOA guarantee did hold true with the 62 grain M855 clone. We got about 3 MOA, which is very, very common for M855, not really known as a overly accurate round. However, with our 69 grain ADI match, we shot about 1.2 MOA, five shot group, and with 73 grain Hornady ELDs, we shot even tighter than that, basically putting all rounds touching at again 50 yards for right at one MOA. So even with this cheaper, older, discontinued barrel, we're still getting the accuracy that they claim, which again, I'm very happy with. Now, as far as shootability goes, that has mostly to do with the Rook muzzle brake, which is again a very very effective break, but a little bit of it also has to do with the gassing on the barrel. Again, this is a 16 inch mid-length barrel. I believe I didn't check the gas board. I forgot to do that, but I'm imagining it's somewhere between a 0.074 and a 0.076, which is perfectly fine for a general purpose upper if you're not planning on suppressing it, which you're probably not with this massive muzzle brake that they do include. Now it was ejecting that M855 clone at about 2.30 to 3 o'clock, depending on if I was using an H3 buffer or a regular carbine buffer. And with remanufactured ammo, that 55 grain Callaway that I shoot a lot, it was ejecting anywhere from 3 to 3.30. So definitely general purpose gassed, not really gamer gassed. They could definitely go a little bit lower on it and get that final 
five to seven percent of just perfectly flat shooting up a receiver but even as it is it was incredibly easy to keep it on target even at extended ranges at least for speed shooting say 50 60 yards now as far as the upper receiver that i have on hand here i am very happy with its performance however i would be a little bit disappointed at that 1200 plus dollar price tag with a cheaper barrel the cheaper bcg and of course just a regular mil spec charging handle now, with the updated versions at, again, the same price tag, about 1200 bucks, I think the performance would almost undoubtedly be better. The reliability should, in theory, be a little bit better as well, and that should leave you, at the end of the day, with a pretty competent package for a unique-looking AR that can also double as a gamer gun. Again, this is not a value upper. They're certainly not trying to be the lowest price upper on the market, and again, they're trying to offer a little bit more of a unique package, hence their name. So... Is this upper receiver for everyone? Well, no, it's definitely not gonna be for everyone. For one, you have to like the aesthetic enough to pay the little bit of premium for their handguards. Now, I do like the look of this handguard, but again, this is one of their more tame ideas. Some of their other handguards, well, of course, there's custom handguards that can be as gaudy as the customer wants, but even some of their more basic looks are a little bit more ostentatious than I care to delve into. And of course, if you're not just gonna look at it because you like the aesthetic and you're actually going to shoot it quite a bit, as a gamer gun, I think it works quite well, especially if you're going to swap in something like an adjustable gas block or some other means of just slowing down that BCG a little bit and getting the last little bit of performance out in terms of raw speed shooting and having as little recoil as possible. I think this can be a good option. Again, if you're in that gamer gun category plus aesthetics, I think it can be worth the price premium over obviously more serious duty style builds. Because again, I would never consider this really for a home defense gun, a serious gun, a truck gun, a hunting gun, a hiking gun. I think it kind of falls out of all of those categories. However, if you like to shoot fast or you just love the aesthetic and you're a three gunner or something like that, that is the admittedly small niche where this upper receiver can make sense for you. Again, if you guys have followed me for a while, I definitely put a emphasis on simplicity, reliability, value, so on and so forth. So this upper receiver doesn't really do it for me. But again, when I'm asked, was it fun to shoot? Yes, it was actually very fun to shoot. And I would be excited to try out some of their new, more updated variants and see if they perform even better. But that's just about it for me on this one. Let me know what you guys think of the unique AR Slim Hex upper in the comments down below. And with all that out of the way, guys, I do want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Peace off.